joints on the left. Live in the hands, but it still get a spread. Something for the live, but it still reinvest it. Fear how I fear, then you feel less a blessing. I just want the lesson. I just want protection. I'm up and I'm down, but the sound like progression. Farmer never plans if he waits for perfection. Hey, Finger to the hey, down, hey guys. Thanks for clicking on the video today. Uh, today, I want to go over theory. And now, I'm not saying it with the attitude that this has to happen or I know everything and you're wrong. It's not what I'm saying. Uh, I do hope you learned something from it. I hope you like the video. Uh, and I hope I see you on the stream tomorrow. Uh, and I do hope that by the end of it, you do not jump to the worst possible conclusion, okay? So this is going to be a good one. So it's going to be a little bit different. I will be jumping here to the computer to really highlight what it is. But the question is, is it now time to shore? I mean, here's the thing I'm trying to tell you. Between today and June 20th, I believe that that will be a very important window if you want to grab puts or shorts. Uh, so this is what I'm going to be looking at. We talked about it today on stream. I'm going to show you these two indicators. I talked about it yesterday. But now the question is, when is it going to come into play? And do you go early or do you wait for it? So. I have the recap for today. I'm talk I'm trying to talk smooth today. I'm trying to keep it chill. Okay. I'm feeling chill today anyways, but I got the recap for you. Today was very simple. We know what we're expecting by the end of the week. We still got CPI. There's probably not going to be much uh, leading into that. And then I do have a couple of plays and I did make two plays today. So let's just start with it. Today was a uh, pretty wild baby. I'm, I'm, I'm trying, I'm sorry, I'm trying to hold this in, but it was a very exciting day. We gap down 1%. Now, this is a big deal because over the last few days, we really haven't gapped down 1%. If there was going to be a day where things started to go down, it could have been the day. And why? It is because of Target. Target guided down again for the third time or the second time in three weeks. Now, why is this bad? Because last time that led to the carnage with Costco, with Walmart, and all the discretionary stocks. A lot of people were worried, but then we ended up going up today. And the question is why? Because remember what happened last time three weeks ago, a lot of people were freaking out because simply all of the earnings were good. Now, this is something you need to keep in mind because simply people are worried about the next earnings and more guide downs that could really change things here in the future. So that's literally what drove everything. There was a couple of news events. Again, oil. Uh, when we woke up this morning, everybody upgraded it. The firms, they upgraded their price targets on crude oil. Chevron got a price target increase. Conoco, XOM, all of them did good. And we talked about it today. Every single one of our energy plays since the beginning of the year is actually up now. And we're talking 100 to 700 percent depending on what you got but why is that so big because remember in this options market there's been a lot of things happening but for an option to stay up like that i mean it means something but oil is key if you didn't watch that video with the predictions i would definitely be watching it but there was that news and then there was another piece of news regarding uranium the united states government said they're going to be spending 4.5 billion to be buying domestically uh created i don't know if you create it uh enriched uranium so that was big CCJ uranium stocks went up but overall today was just the melt up and if you want a reason the bonds actually chilled out the dollar today it was up in the morning but right at cash open it came down and we brought this up but then things started to come down so that's pretty much the gist of it tomorrow should be chill today's volume was very low but now coming into these next 10 days this could be a very big window of opportunity so let's go to the computer all right chad so here it is this is what i wanted to show you i think you could see it a lot better when i put them up side by side and we could really go through the dates but this is what i'm trying to show the japanese yen and the 10-year bond when these start climbing and hitting these levels it says one thing but even recently throughout the month of april leading into this big decline we actually saw something big so now what i'm trying to say is that both of them are hitting a new high they have already peaked about a couple of weeks ago and this is what we could see here so keep that in mind but now that they're climbing back up it is really playing out a lot like what we saw in April. So we have two big events. You have the Fed next week, and then you also have over $3.2 trillion expiring of options on that Friday. 
So, same exact thing happened here in April, and it is a really big deal. And this is why I'm saying between today or even June 17th or leading into June 20th after the Fed, after the options expiration, if we start watching both of these indicators do what they did last time, we may very well see some downside, and this may be a good entry opportunity. So, this is what I was talking about today. I don't really know what's going to happen. We had a poll for it and we're saying, do you go now, pay the premium, pay a little bit of money? If you're wrong, you might get double clapped and double smacked or you can go and wait for this. And then by that point, if the market doesn't start slipping, because last time we waited around here, we saw the same signals, but... It played out a little bit weird, and after some of this volatility, cheap contracts got expensive again, and then the options started to get a little bit weird. So keep all this in mind. I would love to hear your answer in the comments below, and let me know what you think, but this is simply what I want to show you. Take notes of these days. So you have one big peak here towards the end of April. This is the Japanese yen, and then it came down, and then starting April 1st, April 5th, it broke out a new high. You start watching it climb and climb and climb all the way until it peaks around April 28th or about May 9th. And again, these days should you know mean something to you because May 9th, I believe, was what? This bottom right here or one of these. And every single time the market went down, but just take a look here. This is April 1st as the yen started to weaken. Again, this chart going up on Forex, that actually means that it's weakening. But go through the chart and you'll notice as the yen was climbing, the market is just slowly selling off. And usually these key inflection dates, you could notice that has actually been a shorter term bottom. Then it would trip out a little bit and then continue along. And then, like we said, May 9th and all of that. But that's just the Japanese yen. Let's go now to the 10-year bond. So here is the 10-year, and as you can see, same exact date, around March 28th, March 29th, you had a big, big run-up, then we hit a peak, and then it came down, and then starting April 1st, everything started to climb, and then we started hitting more levels, but again, these same dates correlate with the market going down, and then we hit a one peak April 19th, came down and continued, that's where the market did all of this, and then May 6th, May 9th, that was our other big bottom if you remember that day it was very very scary and then it has came down just like it has at other points before hitting a high and now it is coming back up again so you could see the correlation these are the two indicators but this is now probably the main thing we're gonna have to watch until we get to the fed now the fed will be on friday or next friday and then this friday with the cpi that will be an important event but don't get your hopes up jerome powell the next week he is probably gonna have a way bigger effect but a lot of people are looking at the CPI to get more data. Remember, inflation isn't that big of a concern right now. I know that sounds counterintuitive to say, but the market is more worried about what the Fed is going to do, what the data will allow them to do, and then they are worried about an economic slowdown. You saw some of those fears come back today with Target. Now, inflation is still a very big thing, but the big key to watch for it is whether or not it hits another high. If inflation goes above 8.5, 8.6 on Friday, then we're going to have a problem. Otherwise, most people will take the data within the CPI and use that to now prepare for the other two things that we said. Is there going to be an economic slowdown or recession and or what is Jerome Powell going to do? So keep all that in mind. That is the week. That is the thesis. I hope this helps. I hope even... Uh, less crazy Josh in the calm voice is able to show you a little bit better, but that is your watch list, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure Hydra Healthy ready to go. Make sure post your watch list. Make sure we see you there in the morning. I need the armor on. I need the helmet shining. I need you to remember you got to know good and bad. You got to stick to what you believe, and you got to take care of your community. And that's it. I love you. Again, thank you again for being here. I love you. I like. I kind of like this. This is like old Josh. Oh, uh, you don't see me on the on the camera today. Oh, man. I, well, you got to see me a little bit. It was good seeing you while it lasted. I like this. Go watch the old videos. I didn't. I wasn't yelling at this screen as much i don't know maybe i've been too excited i don't know i like this though you let me know what you think though chad okay we love you and god bless you and finger to the sky baby i'll see you in the morning drink that water peace out <laughs>